Well, good morning, Bay Chapel. Woo! Man, I don't know if there's any other place I would rather be to worship together. My goodness, it is amazing to get to come together and worship the name of Jesus and declare him holy and worthy no matter what else is going on in our life. I look, I turn, I was down here and I turned over and I just saw this little beautiful little boy with his dad worshiping. And you have no idea how amazing that is to our God to see his children glorifying him. And I am so honored that I get to do this alongside of every person in this room. So just give yourselves a hand. And while your hands are together, will you help me worship, uh, welcome, not worship, will you help me welcome those who are watching online with us? Let's give it up for them. We're so glad that you're with us today. If you haven't been here before, we've been in a series that we've called Rhythms. And if you haven't watched the past couple of weeks, Pastor Wes has set it up to help us kind of get started in this new year and to think about the way we are living this life and the rhythms that are really shaping the way we live day to day. And I'll be honest, there's no, there's no expectation there's no expectation for you to master every single one of these rhythms that we're talking about, but I, what I will do is I will challenge you to try one. Be intentional about one, whether it's what we've already talked about in the past weeks of resting, or maybe it's what we're gonna talk about these next few moments, or maybe the week to come, but you will know the one when you hear it. And I'm gonna challenge you to be intentional about reshaping your life and build it around these healthy rhythms that are gonna make sure that we keep God at the front and center of our life. Does that sound good? All right, well, let's dive in together. Has anybody here ever had a song that's gotten stuck in your head? Yeah, yeah? Anybody got a song stuck in their head right now? Who knows what? Some kids' song in Kanto, if you have kids, those songs get stuck. Well, I was taught that when you do have a song that's kind of stuck in your head for a while, that you do what's called close the loop, which means you just listen to that song all the way through. And that helps your brain close the loop so that it doesn't keep replaying. Because before that happens, it's kind of like your brain has like a scratching record going on in your, in your head. But once you close the loop, that's supposed to help you get it out of your head. Well, two Sundays ago, I went to the Strath Center and saw uh, the Broadway musical Hamilton, everybody. Yeah, okay, we got some Hamilton fans. Well, for the past two weeks, I've had Hamilton songs stuck in my head. And the thing is, when I've gone to try to close the loop, pull up Spotify, play uh, the soundtrack, when I've tried to close the loop, I have been extremely unsuccessful in doing that. And I've learned why. Because it's very typical in Broadway musicals to have something that's called overlapping melodies which means when I go to play one song through, somewhere tucked away in that song is a melody of a song we've already heard or one that's soon coming. And so it's quite difficult to close the loop on one because then in an instant, your brain is transported to another song that's somewhere in the musical. As a matter of fact, I learned that one, one Hamilton number has up to six overlapping melodies going on and on at the same time. So instead of one scratching record happening in your brain, you've got six. That's hard. Needless to say, it's extremely, extremely exhausting and very difficult. But as I took a minute to think about that, I realized that in my own life, I have more than just Hamilton songs that play along in my mind. If I'm honest, this is just really a picture of what my inner life and thought life can look like. It can be chaotic. One thing, one message overlapping another. 
I don't know if this will be good. What am I even doing? You need more practice. Am I doing a good job? I should have done that better. Do they like me? And that was just this morning. <laughs> if we took a survey all across this room, some of us, we probably had melodies playing or messages playing in our heads for years. They might even be harsher, deprecating, or just simply untrue. Yet, they've been playing for so long, there's not really much else we know. And that's why I love the passage that this entire Rhythms series has been built around. Because in Matthew 11, and we're gonna read the message translation of this, Jesus is talking. And he says this, he asks these questions, are you tired? Worn out, burned out on relig religion, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. And what we're gonna focus on today, this next line, keep company with me. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The invitation from Jesus is to keep company with him. The, the translations also say, yoke yourself to me. Get close, spend time with me. And the way we accept Jesus' invitation is through a rhythm of prayer. It's a rhythm of prayer. The best way to get a song that has overlapping melodies out of your head, it is not to play that song through. It's actually to listen to something else. And it's best to keep pulling yourself away from those loops and listen to him. The same is true for all of us, everybody, whether you have six or 20 or maybe what feels like hundreds of overlapping messages that are not true and that are lies from the enemy. Listening to them will not help. But Jesus gives this invitation that says, come keep company with me and I will talk to you. I will give you a word, I will give you a message. And we do that and we make space and room for that when we build in rhythms of prayer. Now prayer won't eliminate the chaos that happens around us, but it does keep us from being overtaken and overwhelmed by them. When we learn to keep company with the Lord, everybody through prayer, we'll see it. We'll see that he can be found even in the exhausting work shifts, the mid-morning kid tantrums, and the difficulty with what's going on in our life. No matter what, he can be found and we can learn to keep company with him. So now today's talk, it is not an all-encompassing teaching on prayer. Um, it, there's just way too much to cover, and I'm just only hoping today to kind of whet your appetite. But if you are interested in going a little bit deeper, I'd want to take a quick moment to make sure that you know that there is a resource available to you called Right Now Media. Do we have any families that are using Right Now Media in this place? Yes. An incredible resource is an entire library of teachings and studies, and there's an incredible course available called The Prayer Course. And I highly recommend it to anybody that's wanting to go deeper and really wanting to, to dig into building this rhythm of prayer in your life. And so there should be a QR code there. You can scan that. And we believe so much in it as a church that it is free to you. You don't have to pay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Bay Chapel, because we believe in it. And we know that this will be an incredible um, addition to your home, to your kids, and to your own life. We actually had a family who uses it in our church share this quick testimony here. It says, our family loves having access to Right Now Media. 
We use this resource on a daily basis as a family. Our children are three, four, and nine years old. And for the last year, we have enjoyed a family bedtime routine of singing songs and watching a short devotional as a family. Sometimes it's a children's program and others an adult message. The word of God is coming alive to our kids as we spend this quality time together. Right now, media makes it easy for us to find trusted content that points our entire family to Jesus. I highly recommend this resource to families and individuals looking to learn more and dive deeper into the word. And you will never run out of amazing videos to watch. So that's the blessing that it is to this family. Yes, give it up. And it's available to you too. Now, just like any resource, everybody, it's not helpful unless you actually use it. And so I wanna encourage you, take advantage of this. And again, if you wanna dig deeper in what we're gonna talk about over the next few minutes, I highly encourage you uh, to dig in to Right Now Media. Does that sound good? Yes. All right, so now, in order to really wrap our heads around this idea or this concept of Jesus' invitation to keep company with the Lord, I had to start thinking about creation. Because when we go back to Genesis, Pastor Wes actually helped us kick off this series and we started there. But when you think about creation, the Bible talks about how Adam and Eve walked and talked in the garden with the Lord. Now this was well before any sickness or sadness or disease was in the world. So that begs the question, what did they talk to God about? What did they talk to God about? And we really don't know. Maybe God did all the talking, or maybe they just sat there together. But either way, this is the beautiful, beautiful first picture of what it looks like and what it means to just keep company with him to just linger with him. And because of Jesus, everybody, we have the same opportunity today. We can have authentic fellowship and keep company with God. And that is amazing. But unfortunately, when we do make time to spend with God, if you do at all, it doesn't look much like what Jesus is inviting us to. Here are a few reasons that I think that happened, especially in the context of prayer. The first one is, I think sometimes we're too intimidated to pray. It's too intimidating. You know, you sometimes think that prayer is kind of reserved for those extra spiritual people who, can, who really know what they're talking about. They may insert a few these and thous in there too. Yeah, you think that it's kind of reserved for them. And so you feel intimidated, like, I don't know what to say. What if I say the wrong thing? But everybody, if, if, if Jesus came for everybody, then I believe prayer also is for everybody. It is not reserved for some separated group or some elite spiritual group of people. He wants to keep company with you. He wants to keep company with you. And it, it, it's, it's that intimidation that can kind of hinder us from really being intentional about building this rhythm into our life. Another reason I think that prayer can feel like a lot is that we, we often don't pray until we need or want something. You know, we've all been there. My best prayer life was in high school when a pop quiz was coming up, guys. <laughs> I mean, I was deep in prayer. When I didn't know that it was coming and I was not prepared, Lord, please get me through this. We've all prayed that prayer of urgency that is just like, all right, Lord, I'm in this situation. If you get me out of this, I promise I will do better. I will do better. But can you, can you just imagine? Think about the relationships in your life. Is it ever fun when a person only spends time with you or comes to you when they're asking for something? That's annoying, isn't it? And not to say that that's not the case, God loves it when we ask, but I do believe that the invitation of keeping company with him through prayer is a little bit deeper and a little bit more than just 
the request of, or the urgent prayer of get me out of this. So we're intimidated sometimes. We, we usually or often pray only for what we need or want, but another reason is we often forget that it's a relationship. We're in a relationship. And relationships, you know what? They require communication. They require some vulnerability. They require some authenticity. And in the spaces of keeping company with God and answering that invitation to pray, we get to do that. We get to be authentic. We get to be angry and mad. We get to say, are you kidding me, God? <laughs> but we also get to allow him to meet with us. And it's the ebb and flow of any relationship that we experience here on earth. We get that in the spaces of prayer. Pete Gregg, he's the founder of 24-7 Prayer, and he's actually the one who leads that prayer course that I was just talking about. And he has a quote, and I love it, what he says. He says, as you set out on the many paths of prayer, the Lord is going to join you on the journey. He's going to walk with you in silence and talk with you too. The conversation will ebb and flow. He will tell you things you never knew, and ask you things you've never told. Occasionally, you'll lose your sense of him, but not for long. Sometimes he will suggest a rest or a particular path, but mostly he will follow your lead, accompanying you every step of the way until eventually you come full circle, arriving home, knowing yourself known. Prayer allows God, everybody, to be involved in every part of our day, not just the challenging ones. It's a time to just simply be with him and not just to get something from him. It's the beautiful, beautiful opportunity to actually let him do the talking sometimes. And that's the prayer, that's the invitation of prayer that we get and what God wants with each of us as we begin to keep company with him. So I just want to give all of us today, in the short few minutes we have left, uh, just a simple tool to use as you begin to develop your rhythm. I'm a person of tools, so this helps me. I use this in my own personal prayer rhythm. And for you, you might use this once a day, twice a day. For others, it might be five times a day. Some of you, you can do this in five minutes, and others, maybe you want to do it for 50 minutes. And that doesn't matter what it looks like. But the point, everybody, is just to be consistent, just to be regular and build the rhythm of keeping company with Jesus. So number one, it's an acronym. It should be easy for us to remember or what I hope will be easy for you to remember as you go from this space today. But number one, the P in pray is to pause. It's to pause. I remember going on a trip. Um, Tiffany was actually taking me to her hometown in Sarasota. And part of the way down, um, the conversation, we had been chatting for a bit. And I think she just mentioned, she said, well, I don't really have anything else to share. What, what's going on with you? And I turned to her and I said, you know, I'm actually okay just to sit here and be, be quiet. And that is extremely awkward when you are with a person you do not know, right? You can't just be silent. And I, what, but what I love about starting off the time of prayer in a moment to be still and to be silent, that gives the space for us to just be with him. As a matter of fact, um, Pastor Rich Velotas, he says this, the more familiar you are with someone, the easier it is to be silent in that person's presence. So th when you're on the road trip, who is it that sits in the passenger seat and when the conversation kind of trails off, you can actually be comfortable in the silence, in the stillness. And I get it, again, it does start out awkward at first, but when we build the rhythm of pausing, of still stilling ourselves, 
and silencing what's happening around us, even if it's just for 30 seconds, it can change everything. It can change everything. And that's how we start our time with the Lord. Again, whether it's for 30 seconds or you choose to be silent for an hour, which maybe some of us should practice that. <laughs> but silence, whatever it looks like, pausing and choosing to keep company with him. This is a beautiful part of the invitation that probably many of us have not even learned to practice. Maybe even our thought or concept of where, what prayer looks like is we do all the talking. But what a beautiful moment and what a beautiful space that when we begin to nurture and cultivate this relationship with God and answer this time of keeping company with him, we can pause and we can choose to be comfortable with him. So P is pause and the second one is, it's actually two words, reflect and rejoice. And I, in my prayer rhythm, will do either or, or sometimes my prayer time will um, incorporate both. But that time of reflection is just a moment to kind of replay the day, visually replay what's ha what has happened in your day and asking the Lord, God, what, what about this day was of you? But then also, God, what, what about this day was not? Where was I angry or anxious? Where was I mad or where was I happy? And it's a moment of reflecting on what has happened and allowing him to actually speak to it. But also in the same way, we can rejoice too. And I usually have this rhythm, especially at the start of my day. That may look like me reading a psalm, that might look like me playing a worship um, a, a worship song, and sometimes I make up my own songs, and God delights in it, but you might not. <laughs> you might not. I, I'm, I'm not vocally skilled. But in that space is where the most authentic words come out. And there have been times where all I have been able to say is, you're holy. You are worthy. And choosing to position my heart in a space that just gives him the glory even when everything else may not be making sense. So it's a pausing stillness. It's reflecting and rejoicing. But the third thing, the A in pray, is we ask. Asking is a part of prayer and you can ask for you or you can ask for others. And I love uh, this one moment that happens in scripture where actually God, he tells Solomon, he comes to Solomon, King Solomon in a dream, and he tells him, hey, ask me anything you want. And this is what happens. First Kings chapter three, starting at verse five, it says, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. And so then Solomon in this moment starts responding to him and he goes to say, now Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your ser servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And God's response, if you actually go and continue in the story, God is amazed at Solomon's answer. Because he could have asked to be the richest person ever. He could have asked to kill off the people he didn't like. But what Solomon asked in humility was, help me where you have me. Help me, Lord, where you have me. You have positioned me here, and I need help. And so God goes on to bless him with wisdom, but he also gives him beyond what he had even asked for. And that happens in the space. 
And so when we in our prayer rhythms begin to ask, what if we think about what we're holding, the situation, the season, the time, I don't know the difficulty, I don't know what you're going through, but in that space of asking, maybe you're thinking about your friends, I'm thinking about the family that we just celebrated with yesterday, and my prayer is, Lord, will you help them where you have them? Because that's difficult, that's heartbreaking, and in the space of asking, that's what we get to do, so we pause, we reflect and rejoice, we ask, and then the why and pray, we yield or we say yes to God. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Yielding is a place in that rhythm of prayer that sets us back into a posture of remembering that he is God and I am not. He is God and I am not. I think about Joseph in the Old Testament because he had some very difficult moments where he was sold into slavery by his brothers and thrown into a pit, where he was put into prison and having to sit there for years. But if, if God had answered the prayer requests of getting him out of those moments way down the line, he never would have been in the position to save his entire people. And in the prison or in the pit, it's hard. Yet Joseph, at the end of his time, when he meets with his brothers, he said, hey, what you meant for evil, God used it for good. God used, amen, amen. And in that space of prayer, we in that time yielding, recognizing that he can see this thing from a different angle, from a different perspective. We'll close with this verse in Isaiah 55. This is the Lord speaking. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that's what we remember in a space of yielding. That's what we remember when we say yes to God. So we pause, we reflect, we rejoice, we ask and we yield. And that is the beautiful rhythm of keeping company with Jesus. Will you bow your heads with me? When we first started out these few minutes together, I pointed out that one of the greatest ways to really start in cultivating this rhythm of prayer is we have to remember that we're in a relationship. But maybe you are in this space today and you would say to me, I, I don't have that relationship. I just want you to know that it is available to you. And so just in this moment, if you want to begin to keep company with the Lord and to experience all of his goodness, his presence, and everything that he has to offer. I want to pray with you and just boldly, if you would, just right where you are, on the count of three, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and that way I know to pray with you. On the count of three, one, two, three. Come around. Amen, I see you, I see you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In 
this space today. It doesn't matter what my words are, but simply what's happening in your heart. But you can just repeat after me and, and just pray a simple prayer that just says, Lord Jesus, I give myself to you. I want relationship with you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for forgiving me. Today, I choose to walk with you, to surrender everything, and to make you Lord of my life. Just for these next few minutes, I'm gonna quickly walk us through so you can see how easy it is to do what we've talked about and to build this rhythm. So just for the next couple of seconds, will you just pause and be still with the Lord? just want you to replay your morning. Replay your morning with him. And just ask, Lord, what was of you? And in the same way, I want you to reflect and ask, what wasn't of you? something that we can ask for. Will you just think about the thing you want to ask for, whether it's for you or for someone else? And with that situation playing right in your mind, I just want you to ask him, help where you have me. Help me where you have me. And now, Father, we yield to your way, knowing that it is your thoughts and your ways that are much higher than our own. And we don't get all of it. Not all of it makes sense, but we know it does to you. And so we turn our hearts, remembering that you are Lord. And no matter what, you are holy and you are worthy. We, we accept this invitation just to keep company with you, to stay close, to become comfortable and familiar with who you are in this rhythm of prayer. Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise, and it's in Jesus' name, amen. Will you help me celebrate with those who said yes? There were hands all over. So don't forget that there are resources just for you. We are not gonna leave you hanging, but in this moment, if your hand went up, then we have a next step for you. So would you just Take a quick minute and text the word yes. If you said yes to a decision with Jesus and starting new relationship with him, text that word to the number on the screen that's behind me. And your next step, which we'll give you more details and information about, everybody, is water baptism. We're gonna be celebrating on February 19th. Yeah, go ahead, you can celebrate because we're gonna go crazy 
in this space, we're gonna celebrate with those who did that very thing, who said yes, and they're ready to tell all of the world about this decision to keep company with Jesus. Would you stand all over this room? We're gonna pray and dismiss. It's been so fun hanging out with you today. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your faithfulness. And we thank you for the continued invitations to accept the unforced rhythms of grace with you. And today we ask that as we go from this place, that your Holy Spirit would teach us, Lord, how you want us to continue to keep company with you. We bless you, Lord, and I pray your protection over every person as we go from this place today. And it's in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, church.